Hello everyone. Welcome to my live stream. Today we're going to talk about three events or three issues. The first thing I'm going to talk about the age of the women in the Olympic Games. What is the age limit? Is there any age limit? Secondly, I'm going to talk about the Taekwondo athletes in the Olympics. We have just finished all the competitions in Taekwondo. I hope you have paid attention to all the detail. Uh, I'm going to talk about one of the Canadian athletes. Her name is Skyla Park. She competed, <coughs> sorry, she competed in the uh, below 57 kilogram. Uh, we're going to watch her interview, just a clip, and we're going to talk more about her mental stage and how can she improve. Yeah, how can she improve for the next Olympic Games? Thirdly, I'm going to talk about what kind of activity or what kind of mental stage the athletes should prepare before the competition. Okay, so stay on, make sure you stay on. The first one, what do you think is the age limit to compete at the Olympic Games? Well, you have seen the gymnastic events. Okay, one athlete in the gymnastic, she is at 46 years old and she is still competing. You know, many, many times I heard from athletes or coaches, even the sports officials, they always said, oh, when you reach 30 years old, it's too old. And we, when it comes to athlete selection, in terms of uh, subjective events, you know, certain sports, they have subjective events. You are not able to really measure them in, in, uh, in, in terms of speed, in terms of power. So many officials will think that when you are older, when you reach over 30, your performance uh, advantage is actually going downhill. So they tend to pick athletes who are younger, like below 30 years old. As, as you can see in swimming, many athletes that are below 20, they are actually performing really well. That is just a norm. When athletes, especially female athletes, when they reach certain age, not that they are, just my personal opinion, not that they are not performing well, not that they are going downhill, it's just that they may have different focus. You know, some got married, some have to go to school, have to work, have to find job, you know, to earn a living. I know some many athletes, they actually endure. For example, this uh, gymnast athlete, she endure and she return or she endure in a uh, gymnastic uh, competition because of her son. I think she was trying to raise funds for her son. So yeah, in a way, we athlete myself, or I'm an athlete myself, we athlete, if you're an athlete out there, we actually, create the theory for the world. We actually create the history. We create the miracles. We don't let officials or we don't let the society to judge us, to label us that we cannot do this, we cannot do that because we are too old. We actually set the history. We can set the history when we all together, athletes all together, you know, stay strong, endure. We can create history. We can be the pioneer or pioneers saying we athletes, we can still, or we female athletes, we can still perform at the um, certain age, like the over 30 or over 40. Because no, not many have done that. So we do not have the role model. Because when we do not have the role model, we tend to think that, oh, maybe it's not possible. Maybe it's too, too difficult. No one has done that. But the gymnast, she's 56 years old or 46 years old. She's still competing really good. Have you seen her twist, her jump? It's still really, really strong. So I, I do believe if you have the will, there's always the way. Okay. It's not only in sports, but in any any area of your life, like in your business, in your uh, maybe studies. If no one has done that, or no one in your family have gone to university, or no one in your family have studied PhD, for example, right? You can do it. You don't let the history determine you. You don't let the history uh, make your life. You create your life. You can change it, right? With God's help, for, for sure. 
if you look at the high performance athlete, they, they believe in the universe, they believe in God. Uh, so far, I've seen many athletes, they like to make, uh, they are Catholic, they make the cross sign. And many athletes, when they achieve gold medals, when they achieve medals, they always thank God, they look at the sky and thank God. So these are the spiritual strength they can get from the universe, from God. So yeah. So with God's help, anything is possible. I would like to uh, show you the, okay, I want to show you the picture, hold on. The picture of the athlete. We can go together and we can, um, okay, let's go together and we can take a look at the example, okay? Example, if you want to Google search, I'm really careful with the uh, copyright. Sometimes it's better for me to show you Google search and show you how to reach, how to search Google search and then you can search it for yourself and you can type Tokyo Olympics gymnastic, right? Oh, the gymnast, yeah. Say, so you can see from here. Watch forty-six years old gymnast Oksana Oksana Chusovitina. Uh, pardon me if I did not pronounce your name correctly get an emotional farewell yeah you can check her video here you can check uh there are many youtube video here Rock. all this female olympic gymnast of all time oksana this is five days ago by cbc news she is such a, an, um, a role model she is a role model for many many female athletes i really admire her and would like to congratulate her Okay, you can check from CBC Sports and all that. And if you like to check the news, you can watch the news, click the article. I'm going to click now so we can uh, read together. So watch 46 years old gymnast Oksana. Look at her. Look at her. She is such a role model wow uh there are many videos shows her her chronological uh events in gymnastic she started when she was really young and then now she's 46 so you can watch all her videos on youtube and she said her son is 22 years old and she wanted to spend time with her and she retired this was her last Olympic Games. And you can see from here from Google search, this is from the Tokyo Olympics. I got it this from uh, Yahoo Live. I, this is public domain, we can search through together. Okay, let's watch together from here. There's no research, uh, no, no, um, not many research have been done to look at the age of the athlete. Uh, most of the athletes are like over 30, most of them, but not many athletes are over 40. I guess this is not available, so it's on Twitter. Okay. Let me see if you can see that it's on Twitter. Okay, let's see, it's on Twitter, okay? Okay, let's go back. I'm gonna share with you on Twitter. Okay, let's go to Twitter and uh, watch her clip on Twitter. Twitter is a public domain. 
something went wrong. Okay, retrieve. Hopefully this works. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It's from Twitter. Let's see what she said. It's one minute and 28. This video is not available in your location. Okay. Well, you can take a look. Okay. Um, so check it out it's oksana all right so we're gonna go to the next one okay i'm gonna bring you together let's go to the research we're gonna go to google search and search who are the oldest athletes at the olympics Each knows. Okay. So let's check. Who are the orders? So if more and more female athletes that are over forty competing at the Olympics, that will change the trend. No one will say, "Okay, you are too old to compete." So we need more and more athletes, uh, female athletes, come and compete at a certain age, like over forty. Uh, that will set the trend. That will set the trend. You don't let the society to set the trend. The athlete, they are the one who set the trend. Okay. So Tokyo Olympics, all those athletes. So let's see who are there. Okay. Let's see. The oldest athlete at the Olympic Games, at the Tokyo Olympics, 72 years old. Wow. 72 years old. Grandmother. The oldest, the oldest Olympic athletes was a Swedish shooter named Oscar Swan, who was 72 years old, 280 days old when he won a silver medal. Oh, sorry, in the 90, in the 1920 Olympics. It's a shooter. Well, people may say, oh, shooter, because they don't use a lot of muscular strength. They don't use a lot of flexibility. They don't use a lot of cardiovascular. That makes sense. That makes sense, but if you look at gymnastics, that you they need a lot of all, all the components of fitness, which is they need flexibility, muscular strength, muscular endurance, right, reaction, agility, and so on, and cardio, yeah, cardiovascular strength, and so on. So this one, she competed in 1920 Olympics, 72. As you know, the sports standard is getting higher and higher. It's actually getting harder and harder to compete if you don't improve yourself. So every year someone uh, breaks the Olympics record or world record. So an athlete uh, keep you know uh, improving all the time. Okay, uh, I'm interested to see who are the other, uh, who is the oldest athlete at the Tokyo Olympic Games. Here, look at, we go through here. Uh, this one, the women's soccer team, Carly, she's 39. She's the oldest athlete uh, on the U.S. women's soccer team in Tokyo, 39. Okay, let's go to the next one. Equestrian Philip Dutton, 57, will be Team USA oldest athlete in Tokyo. Equestrian, 57. It's still pretty good. 57 is a middle age. It's a re for some many people they have retired. Maybe maybe he has retired. So equestrian you rely on the horse as well as well as your riding skill. So there are many variables there. Next one. 
Jack, 45, in USA, volleyball's oldest ever Olympian, beach or indoor. So he's 45. That's super good. It's a good role model. Volleyball, you need a lot of strength. Cardiovascular, flexibility, agility. You must know how to move and uh, must, good, must have good reaction. Next one. Brazil, Formigas, 43, women's soccer. This is her seventh Olympic Games. Next, oh. equestrian again, 66, <gasps> 66. The oldest athlete, she's a grandmother. Wow, equestrian. Now, you, if you are a horse rider all the time, and then, of course, it, of course, this relies on the horse as well. You need to take care of the horse. You must have a good horse. The next one, yeah, I mentioned before, Oksana, 46. This is her eight, number eight. Wow, number eight Olympic Games. Oh, See, the average of the U.S. women's gymnastic team is 20.8, which is like 21 years old. And her son is 21. Her son is older than the average women's gymnast. Amazing. She, still, she is still very strong. She can flip and turn and jump really good. Wow. So next one is another equestrian. Seems like equestrian. If you would like to go to Olympics, maybe you can consider equestrian or maybe shooting. Um, 80 years old from Japan. Wow. She's the oldest Olympian, 80 years old. So we have the answer. Who's the oldest Olympian at the Tokyo Olympics? It's Hiroshi from Equestrian Team of Japan. He's the oldest, 80 years old, 80. Wow. Next one. That's it, I guess. Okay, that's it. So. If there's a will, there is always a way. We can set the train. We set the train. You don't let the society to set the train. So now we are moving on to the uh, Tekono team. One surprise thing. Do you know that no gold medal from the Korean Tekono team this time is really, really surprising. Normally, at least one gold medal from korea this is the only olympics where no gold medal won by the korean taekwondo team i'm very sorry to hear that why there are many story behind of course there are many factors okay uh, i would like to look at the uh the canadian athlete female athlete in taekwondo her name is skylar park she won the first round and she didn't make it the second round even though she has uh, bested the, the athlete from Chinese Taipei before, but at the Olympic game, she didn't uh, win the match. Uh, she lost by points. So let's go and take a look at the interview. She was interviewed by CPC right after her games. Not immediately, but like maybe one day after. Okay, let's check it out. You can see it? Okay. I'm gonna show her maybe a bigger. <coughs> show a bigger here. Pay attention. If you like to see the whole interview, you can go to YouTube and then under CBC channel, okay? CBC Sports. And you type in RPC Spotlight, Skylar Park, and Mandy Bujo. Uh, I think they are RPC sponsor athlete. So this is just an interview clip and see what she said. And we're gonna try to help her. How can she prepare for the next Olympic games? Okay, let's go. When I'm talking about it, what she has achieved is so much more than gold. Um, now, coming to us live, uh, Miss Skylar Park, the pride of Winnipeg. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, how are you doing, my friend? 
Um, I'm okay. Thank you for having me. Um, I could be better, but um, yeah, just trying to look at positives. And this isn't the ending that that I wanted or that I dreamt of, but um, this isn't the end for sure. It's been a few hours since your match. Um, what's going on, you know, in your head right now? What What are you thinking about? I think just trying to really process all that's happened. Um, it's been a crazy week and Hi, are you there? <laughs> I am not so sure. Okay, something wrong with the event. Uh, oops. I, I'm checking here. I don't know what's happening. Hi, are you there? <laughs> I am not so sure. Okay, something. Okay. <laughs> Technical issue here, but anyway, I'm going to edit the video anyway. <laughs> I'm going to put all the together and then I'm going to put in the YouTube channel. Just a clip. Uh, yeah. Because this is live stream, and there's no editing. You just take whatever it is, whatever it is. So once it is edited, I'm gonna re-upload uh, the video. Uh, I I think I'm I should uh, show you again the video here. Uh, okay, because it was cut off just now. I don't know what happened. All right, let's go back to the <laughs> interview again. Can you see? Okay. We're gonna watch her interview and then we try, we're gonna help, you know, I want to help her. Uh, we like give her some uh, positive comments and constructive, positive, constructive evaluation so that she can improve on for the next Olympics. I, sh I think she has a very good potential. Okay. I, you see that? Okay. Let's start again. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, how are you doing, my friend? Um, I'm okay. Thank you for having me. Um, I could be better, but um, yeah, just trying to Thanks look so at positives and this isn't the ending that that I wanted or
that I dreamt of, but um, this isn't the end for sure. It's been a few hours since your match. Um, what's going on, you know, in your head right now? What, what are you thinking about? I think just trying to really process all that's happened. Um, it's been a crazy week and one that I, I won't forget, but um, there's a lot that I've learned this week, especially today in those, in those two matches. And I'm disappointed with, with the results and, and my performance today, but um, it stings now, but I know um, it'll make me stronger in the end. And yeah. How did you feel going into today? Um, I felt good and I felt confident um, and ready to go, but um, it just didn't really click on the mats today. And I think, yeah, I just, it's just hard because I, I really wanted it. I wanted it really badly and I wanted it for myself and for my family who's been with me through it all and just for Canada. So um, yeah, to come up short today is hard, but the goal for me is still the gold medal. So um, I'll be back. <laughs> And it's only three years away, uh, Paris 2024. I'm assuming that that's the plan then? That is the plan, yes. Three years um, to get better and work harder and, yeah, come back stronger. Your dad is your coach. Um, you, you know, it's a family affair. You have 16 black belts in your family. What did your dad say to you um, after that second match? Um. He said he was proud of me, obviously. Um, he was disappointed as well because we both um, have been wanting to do this and been working towards this. And I think he was disappointed for me. But, um, yeah, he said he was proud of me and that he still loved me. <laughs> it's been an emotional day. I'm going to cry too. <laughs> it's so hard. When All right. So what do you think? What do you think? So, okay. Hello. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think I need to edit the whole thing and then re-upload it. So make sure you check my video, my YouTube channel, Master Sarah Chang. And make sure you check my podcast as well. It is called The Lioness Raw. Lioness, I'm the female lioness raw. Raw, lioness raw is my podcast. So check it out. Uh, check my YouTube channel. I'm going to... Uh, re-edit this video and uh, show it to you later. So what do you think uh, about the interview for the Canadian athlete below 57 kilogram? Um, it's very emotional uh, interview. Uh, every athlete when uh, they got the chance to compete at the Olympics was like, like a dream comes true. I can feel it. I can feel her emotion. One thing or many things that could um, contribute the the outcomes, the results. One thing though, I think she is very lucky because she has her father uh, by her side. Uh, she has all the support, emotional support. One thing that could improve is that I think she need to focus on the on that day. The pre she has to be present, not thinking too much about getting the gold medal. Most athletes when they go to Olympics. They always think about, I want to be Olympic champion. <laughs> I want to win the goal. Of course, everyone wants to win the goal. That is just part of the goal setting stage. That like that have been, if you set a goal and then you work backward, reverse engineering. So you already know what you want. When it comes to competition, 
you have to stay present you have to stay present what should you do in order to to score point instead of thinking about winning that winning doesn't bring you point winning is just a, a goal right winning is a goal but not the actual step that you need to take to win a score in order to win you need to score so you have to think how can you score not about how can you win it's about how can you score how can you score point what is the weakness of your opponent and what is the strength of your opponent uh, i think skylar park has the chance to prepare ahead of time she she has a chance to prepare ahead while ahead of time uh far far at least one year like she knew that she got uh, accepted to the olympics she had like at least one year if not if i'm not mistaken at least one year to prepare for the olympic games she kind of knew who you know who are the opponents who are her opponents so she could have taken her time perhaps she has taken her time to actually examine all her opponents strengths and weaknesses what is their strength like let's say if the opponent is from usa or the opponent is from korea what is their strength do they like to kick with side kick do they like to kick with the left leg do they like to kick with the right leg for certain kick what is their specialty kick is it on the left leg or is it on the right leg how you know what is their favorite stance what is their favorite uh action or reaction so you have to study all the in detail and then you have to do mental rehearsal for each opponent you have to think in your brain like or maybe in your dream you can say that but you can do a lot of rehearsal in your brain thinking close your eyes and thinking how you are performing how are you competing with that athlete with your opponent if your opponent doing x kick and you can see yourself doing the counter attack or counterpoint so all your mental rehearsal has to think about how can you score if you think too much about winning it's just too far away winning is yes when you score when you do the thing that you need to do step by step be present be present now what should you do now the now moment is very important the now what should you do now don't think too far about the gold medal the gold medal will come when you do the now so now what should you do so if it is too tense of course you need to do a lot of mental training you do a lot of tapping i talked about in my previous video a lot of tapping uh, massaging your muscle before you enter the ring or maybe during the break uh, your coach can massage for you your hand your neck whichever spot that you feel tense you should have the chance to do some massaging during the break time so yeah think about the moment now what should you do to score a point okay and of course you have to prepare ahead of time do a lot of mental rehearsal before the competition during competition during the competition that's about it and okay you have to have a you need to get information about your your opponent is very important okay and you have to know the detail of their skills their favorite and their favorite stand their favorite kick and you need to know their coaches you have to study their coaches as well you know what is the signal for the coaches sometimes you can actually uh pre predict what the coaches said to the opponent sometimes what the coaches said to the opponent you can hear that you know if the coaches say something also and then if the coaches say x kick i'll say oh then you think that she's going to give you an x kick they have to prepare how to counter that okay how to how to break that cycle yeah and maybe you need to look at your physiology perhaps you need to do the, some blood tests check my youtube channel check my youtube and my podcast i talk about blood tests why it is important i got a chance to interview scientists sports scientists uh they train athletes they actually measure blood tests for many athletes i really encourage you to look at the the youtube and my or podcast and down below the youtube there's a description about way to get your blood test done but of course if you're canadian you can get it for free but certain blood tests in canada you still have to pay so you have to uh, look at the link that i uh state okay there's a 10 percent discount if you do the press test by clicking on the link okay by clicking on the link there's a set of uh, blood test information that you need to know so that you can ask for this type of blood test 
so that you know where you stand in terms of your physical physiological stage for competition it's very important if you lack of iron you have to take supplement uh, iron supplement if you lack a certain vitamin you have to take that vitamin so that you are in optimum performance okay you're in optimum performance it's very important so you have to check you have to go blood test you have to do a lot of mental rehearsal you have to study your opponent acquire all the information about your opponents yeah and that's for long term okay for, you have three years to plan and mindset is very important you're at the olympics level most most of the athletes have a certain level of uh, physical strength you're almost at the same same level i'm not so sure it's exactly the same but almost almost the same but the mental strategy and the mental moment the mental toughness is really important it's actually more important than, than the physical when you are at the moment so you have to be clear and think and have the moment to think how can you score point it's all about how can you score point not about how can i win so in that moment when you compete looking at athlete how can i score point look at the opponent you know wait what what kind of stand is she standing like that is she moving up her leg is she going to kick you like you can see everything in detail if you pay attention to the moment everything slow down so you can see really in detail you can counter attack that so and self-talk is really important i don't know what do you uh how do you talk to yourself during the competition if you say i want to win i want to win you know it's oh i'm gonna win i want to be olympic gold you know and then i want to kick her but you actually did not focus on the moment you have to think how can i score how can i score more point you know um the self-talk is really important and certain strategy in order for you to be alert you can say alert alert you know for me for me for me when i'm in the in the ring i have a self-talk moment uh, a certain thing that i move my hand so that i'm alert otherwise i may fall asleep you know i may daydreaming sometimes that happened too you know when you were in the ring you're actually daydreaming so i actually move my hand so that i'm actually i'm, I'm in a moment i'm an alert i'm very alert when my opponent move i move i don't stay there and let her kick me so have a self-talk keep the phrase really short let's say i can do it or alert or point score point something like that and repeat it all the time you have to attract positive energy don't say i'm not going to lose i don't want to lose that is negative okay when you talk that then you're going to lose it is true so when you say positive word words is power the words is power yeah so self-talk is really important um you must have a certain self-talk statement for example i'll be okay against a fast opponent because i'm faster for example if say someone say oh she's good then you say i'm better she's good i'm better and she, and if people say she's fast and yeah she's really fast but i'm faster that kind of self-talk you need to have that kind of self-talk uh pay attention to the referee and you need to also study the referee you study the coaches but you also to start know how to study the referees you must know which referees uh, give what kind of you know deduction more than the other referee yeah you need to study the referee we can talk more about that uh, in detail because i'm international referee you need to study the referee as well i know all the referee must know the rule equally but then certain referee have certain uh certain 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 thing that trigger them to to like to give a minus point i, I could say that and you need to change your soft talk from it is difficult for me to it is a challenge for me if you say oh this is so difficult you have to say oh this is a good challenge i love this challenge you know don't say oh this is difficult they say oh this is difficult they say oh this is a challenge yes i can do it this is a challenge instead of saying i cannot do that i cannot do that you have to change so i can do that provided if i do this okay don't say i hope that it's kind of negative opening that i hope that it's kind of negative it's like i'm gonna do it when I'm, i can do it when i'm physically mentally and emotionally fit when i'm emotionally physically and mentally fit i'm gonna win so 
So if you say, I hope that, I trust that, if only, it's kind of, uh-uh, you're not sure, right? You have to change that kind of wording. Don't say if. Try to avoid the word if. If, if, say when I. Don't say if I. Say when I. Don't say if I. No, it's different. Try it. Trust me, try it. If I win this, I will do that. If I say when I'm doing this, I'm going to do that. So it's really make a big difference. And try not to say, I I'm worried about, I'm worried about. There's nothing to worry about. You have to say, it will be okay if I do that. It will be okay if I do that. That is how you solve the problem. It's more about how you solve the problem. Worry doesn't help you to solve problem. It's just an emotion that you can, it's good to acknowledge your emotion, but then you need to have the strategy, the strategy to take away that negative emotion. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. I hope that helps you or your athlete or your, your coaches or whoever uh, in your team. And do let me know if you have any questions and do feel free to contact me. Uh, we can have a chat. Don't worry, I'm not gonna charge you because I would like to help athlete as well. Uh, the first 30 minutes is totally free, really try it out okay that's all for today and um i'll see you next time and really make sure you pay attention to the paralympic paralympics is the olympic games for the disabled or disadvantaged athletes athletes who uh, are in the wheelchairs athletes who uh, lost their hand or leg and etc make sure you pay attention to the paralympics after the olympic games that's all for today and take care. Bye. Cheers. By the way, I'm going to edit the video and upload it again. Okay, take care. Bye.